So what's, what's happened is that, as many of you know, and part of the, the reason that I am such a huge supporter of Leukemia Research Foundation is because they have really stepped up and filled the gap for uh, young investigators. What's happened over the last 10 years with the economy tanking is that the NIH funding has actually gone down in real dollars. It's gone down uh, about 25%. So if you're, uh, if you're an investigator and you have 20 years of experience and you submit a grant to the NCI and next to you is a person just out of fellowship who's got a great idea but he has no track record and there's $100 and you can only give one of them the $100, guess who you're going to give it to? You're going to give it to the guy who's got the track record. The new guy who might actually be smarter than the old guy is not going to get the funding and that's where the Leukemia Research Foundation has stepped in and they just fund new investigators getting them started and I know some of these people because I've been involved with this over the years and some of the some of the leading researchers in this country uh, that have uh, funded track records now they are the old guys actually got their start because the Leukemia Research Foundation funded them way back when so it's an important, but what's happened here recently is that Congress has allocated a new bolus of money for the NIH and uh, specifically the National Cancer Institute. And we're looking to see this rise in funding actually help uh, promote uh, anti-cancer research. I think we're closer now than we have ever been. There's lots of targeted therapies. We talked about the CAR-Ts, we talked about transplant, new agents. Uh, we talked about CML 20 years ago. Everybody who had CML either died or they had a transplant. Now patients are, are getting therapy for five years and potentially even stopping it or potentially cured with just a targeted agent. So there are lots of advances that we're seeing in this disease. It's a, there's a dizzying number of new drugs. We haven't talked about some of the drugs that we each are uh, studying for a variety of diseases for lymphomas and leukemias that are out there that are coming down the pipe. So it's a great time to be a hematologist, if you will, in treating these diseases. And you know nobody wants anybody to get a cancer, a blood cancer, but. Uh, there's lots of new options that are available this year versus last year. There were two new drugs for myeloma that were approved in December. I mean, that's just unprecedented. So uh, there's a lot to be uh, hopeful for in the next few years. And the, fun, the funding will definitely go to help uh, expand programs and fund more new investigators. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, that's it. I got my first sort of uh, big grant through the LRF. Um, and uh, it makes all the difference to, to young people starting out um, yeah, in lab-based careers because, uh, as Dr. Stiff mentioned, the government is um, certainly not funding research to the degree it has um, over 20 years. So now, um, when I write a grant and submit it to the NCI, um, uh, there's 99 other people doing the same thing. Only about uh, eight or nine of those grants are getting funded. Um, and so I'm competing against not only um, younger investigators, but also more seasoned investigators with longer track records. So um, uh, we need more, if we, want to, if we want to get closer to that ultimate goal of eradicating cancer, and I don't know that, we're, that we'll get rid of all cancer, but we certainly have made some strides, but if we want to keep along that uh, high rate of improvement, um, then there needs to be funding for research. And so um, if it's not coming from the government, uh, then it's got to come from somewhere, um, and so this is this is a great venue for that. Um, so I guess the second war on cancer is here. So we'll see we'll see where it leads.